even that big problem, so he can make it for your good. Amen. We got a new song this morning. That's what that song's about. Y'all sing it.
just next to you say, I've been redeemed. Have you been redeemed? sing a couple you didn't know, so I figured we'll sing one more that you do know. Y'all sing long. I was buried beneath my shame. You could carry that kind of weight. It was excited about. So, well, good morning. I'm glad you're here. I hope someone's made you feel welcome this morning. If no one said welcome to you this morning, I want to say welcome. We're glad everyone is here today. I've got several announcements I want to cover. Number one, if you guys are were participating in the uh, bringing the supplies for the Alabama Children's Home, please put those in the back room. We're only doing that today. 
looks like there's a lot of it, but if you have it with you, you don't know what to do with it, please put it back there. Okay. Miss Carol said if you forgot, you can give a donation. So would that just do it to you, Miss Carol? Okay. And she'll help, she'll take care of that. So also we've been uh, we've been talking about this for uh, I started last week, but small groups are starting back. We've you know we canceled small groups uh, during COVID. We attempted to start them back up. We had another round of COVID, and so we kind of just put everything on hold. And so now we're ready to start back things back up. People are ready to start getting together again. So we're gonna we're gonna start that the small groups back up August the seventh. So about a month from now. We're going to start back up. So if you have ever been in a small group here, you will be contacted with more information. But if for some reason if that you're, someone doesn't get in touch with you or you've never been in a group at all and you'd like to be in a part of one, please talk to Brother Johnny here. Brother Johnny, raise your hand right here. Please talk to this guy, and he can get you more information about the small groups, the different groups we have, and how to get a, be a part of that. So, well, all this last week was Vacation Bible School. So everyone here, or half the congregation, is exhausted. And but man, what an amazing, what an amazing vacation Bible school! I want us to give a hand to everybody that participated. Just everybody that. <laughs> people, people cooked and corralled and curated here every night, and I think they raised uh, eight hundred something dollars, right, for Mission Belize. The little kids did bringing their bringing their offerings. So what an amazing thing! So thank you for everybody that did that. It was, it was a, what a wonderful outreach of our church to have people come in and ask us to the parents dropping their kids off, saying, "Please teach my kids about Jesus." So what a great outreach! So I think we're going to do something here right now. We're going to the kids are going to come up and sing you a couple of songs uh, from Bible school, and also we got a video we're going to show. And so we're going to do, we're going to go to the video first. Is that right, Luke? Okay, let's watch this video, and then they're going to come up.
Well, I started to get up there with them and do the, do the motions, but I knew I couldn't keep y'all off the stage then. Y'all would all be up here doing them too. Oh, listen, we had, a, we had a fun time. We had a loud time all week. It was, it was great, and I appreciate everybody that, that, that worked and had a part in this. It's just, it's just marvelous. God bless you. We, we reach out to children during Vacation Bible School, and a lot of children that's not a part of this church came. And uh, I talked to a couple of preachers that uh, in Warrior area that sent their children up here, and they were just overwhelmed with how much the children learn. And I, I appreciate all the work that's been done. It's just, it's just marvelous. Open your Bible, if you would, to Ephesians. Now, I'm, I'm in the ser sermon series, Life in the Spirit. Life in the Spirit. We talk to you about life in the Spirit, life in the overflow, life in, uh, in gifts and, and things like that. But we want to kind of turn the corner a little bit today. We're still in the sermon series, Life in the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to read beginning in verse 17. I, I know it's up there verse 11 through 22, but we're going to read beginning in verse 17. Stand with me, if you will, when you get that opening. Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 17, and we're going to read down through verse 22. If you're ready for the word, say amen. amen. And came and preached peace to you. Who is that? Jesus. And came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were nigh. For through him... We both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, <coughs> but fellow, fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all building, fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. And we'll stop reading right there. And all people said, Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I'm going to ask Brother Johnny, if he will, once again, to lead us in prayer. Amen, amen, you may be seated. We've talked to you about, last week we talked to you about uh, life and the gift, or gifted life. We're still in the, the series, Life in the Spirit. We talked to you about the fullness, 
We talk to you about the overflow. We talk to you about uh, general life in the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit. But today I want to talk to you about life in the temple. Life in the temple. Now that's an unusual thing, but how many of you know today that, that God has always had a temple? He's always had a temple. In heaven he had a temple that was the real thing. He still has that. On earth, he had the tabernacle, the children of Israel in the tabernacle in the wilderness. That was a type of the temple. And then uh, in Solomon's day, there was the Solomon's temple that was uh, built. And then there was Herod's temple that, that stood in Jesus' day. God has always had a temple. But today, there is a temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we want to think about that in particular today. He has a temple on the earth today. We're not meeting in the temple today. This is not the temple of God. As a matter of fact, it's not even the, uh, the sanctuary of God. What this is is an auditorium. This is a, a, a place to hear the word of God. But it's also a place where the, 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 the church meets. But we are not in the temple here in this building, but we are in the temple. And I want to explain that to you in just a moment. This is an unusual concept for most Christians, but I believe that it's one that is necessary. And the Lord God thought it was necessary for me to preach on this today. If you don't understand the temple... In Jerusalem, it's hard for you to understand the Christian life and where we have come to from there. And I want us to delve into that today. Let me give you today's big idea before we get started. God's temple is holy. Can you say amen? amen. Because he has hallowed it and put his name there. Remember, he said, I will put my name in the temple. His temple is, his name is in the temple in heaven. His name is in, we'll get into that in just a moment. Every true believer today is a vital part of God's temple. Today we will study about the temple of the Holy Spirit and uncover the five mysteries which every Christian should cherish. Listen, God has always had a temple. He has a temple now. He always will have a temple. God that's God's idea, by the way. It's not man's idea for him to have a temple. And we are to recognize that and we're not to get away from that idea in our lives. Yes, we are the body of Christ, absolutely, but we also are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Word of God says that. I don't have to question that. Uh, the Apostle Paul in the book of uh, First Corinthians said, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which you have of God and you're not your own? So, with all of that in mind, I, us looking at the temple is so very important. And let me just say to you, today is not a preaching day. Today is going to be a teaching day. Why do you think that's necessary, Brother Gerald? Well, I think that God thinks it's necessary. It's mentioned throughout the Word of God. And we understand that God's idea of having a temple is His idea. So if we, don't, if we don't understand that, then we need to go back and we need to learn that. And that's what I want to do today is teach about that. Let me give you six facts of comparison about the temple of God. And when I, when I just say the temple, I'm speaking of the one in Jerusalem. Okay. Otherwise, I will clarify what I'm talking about. Uh, fact number one is the temple or the tabernacle in the wilderness was God's idea. And he appeared many times in that temple. He appeared many times in the wilderness. The temple in heaven is God's dwelling place. Say that with me. God's dwelling place. Now, he appeared many times at the, at the temple in Jerusalem and also in the tabernacle. But 
the temple in heaven is God's dwelling place. All right? Then, then you have the temple of the Holy Spirit, temple of the Holy Ghost. It's God's dwelling place right now by the Spirit is what it says. It's God's dwelling place by the Spirit until Jesus comes. This is also God's idea, and He put His name there. He put His name in the one in heaven. It's God's throne. He put His name in the one there in Jerusalem. He said, I will put my name in that place, and I will sanctify it. But then the temple of the Holy Spirit God has put His name there. Amen? If you're part of the body of Christ, you are called a Christian. You are called by the name above every name. The name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The second fact of comparison I want you to see, and by the way, I'm not going to give you all the comparisons. We could be here all day. I saw a list that is, is seven pages long of the comparisons of the temple in Jerusalem and the temple of the Holy Spirit now. And it, and it matches up with what's in heaven also. God's always had a temple. He always will have a temple. He has a temple now. So the second fact of comparison that I want you to see is the temple had three distinct areas which were holy. When I say the temple, I'm talking about the temple in Jerusalem. Had three separate areas of distinction, and they were all considered holy. Number one, the outer part, which was the court, all of, all of it was considered the temple. The outer part was the court. The inner part, which was called the holy place, and then you had the innermost court which was the holy of holies all right y'all understand that so far say amen. amen but then the temple of the holy ghost has three distinct areas which are holy what are they one the outer part which is the body of every believer the body of the saints the second part is the inner part which is the soul of man and the third part is the innermost part corresponding to the holy of holies which is the spirit of man now with that in mind I want you to think of the third fact of comparison the temple was exclusive it was exclusive to a covenant people. You had to be a part of the covenant of God to participate in the temple of God in Jerusalem. Somebody said, well, what about the Gentiles, Brother Gerald? Yes, they could come and they could be a part if they were proselyte Jews. We're going to talk about the proselyte process in just a moment. But they, they could come and they could be part of the temple, but only in the Gentile court. And there was a petition built between the Gentile court and the, the Jewish court. They could be a part, but it was exclusive. Unless you were born a Jew or you were a proselyte Jew that was a Gentile, you had no part in the temple. And that's what this is all about. And we're gonna, you're going to see that in a moment when we read the context beginning in verse 11. So... There's those three parts. But then there's the exclusivity of a covenant people. Well, the temple of the Holy Ghost is exclusive also to a covenant people. And, and what's that covenant? That's the new covenant. We call it the New Testament. Jesus, when he instituted the Lord's Supper, he said, this is now the New Testament in my blood, the new covenant in my blood. So we're under another covenant. Amen? The old covenant has been done away. The new covenant is now there. But listen, the temple of the Holy Spirit is exclusive also. I want you to understand that. If you're not born again, you have no part of that temple. And then the fourth 
fact of comparison I want you to see is prayer was made and heard in all the areas of the temple. Same way in the temple of the Holy Spirit. You, you pray, you pray with the body, you pray with the, the heart or the soul and the mind, and you pray with the spirit, the innermost man. Amen? But then sacrifices, number five, sacrifices were made in all the areas of the temple. Yes. Even in the court? Yes. Remember Solomon when he built that great temple. There was the altar of burnt offering inside in the holy place. They would burn offerings there. They would make sacrifices there. But when he dedicated the temple, there were so many bulls, so many sheep that had to be sacrificed, he made a, a, an altar. Those of you that are with us on Wednesday, you, you, you've learned this. He made an altar out from the porch, out in the courtyard, and it was 30 feet long, 30 feet wide, and 15 feet tall. That's a big altar. You've got to have something like that if you're going to burn a thousand bulls on it. And that's what was done on that particular day. And 12,000 sheep. So sacrifices were made then out even in the courtyard. All right? Same way, listen, same way, same way in the, in the temple of the Spirit. In all the areas, in flesh and in mind and in heart, sacrifices can be made. Now, the Apostle Paul said... Uh, in, in, in the book of Romans, he said that you are to bring your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Lord. Listen, there's sacrifices to be made. And we sacrifice the sacrifice of praise with our mouth. Amen? And, and all of those things, and we're not going to get into those, all those things. Now, I'm going to try to keep this simple. After the first service this morning, there was uh, a couple of people said, you made it too complicated, Brother Jerry. Well, I'm just giving you what the Word of God says. I'm not giving my opinion, all right? So I'm going to make it a little simpler this time. The sacrifices, uh, number five, uh, were made in all the areas of the temple and also in the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the sixth comparison is atonement can only be made in the Holy of Holies. They made the sacrifices in all the areas. But once a year, on the Day of Atonement, the Jews call it Yom Kippur. Once a year, the high priest would take the blood and go into the Holy of Holies by himself, and he would sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice on the mercy seat for an atonement for sin. And God said, I will meet with you there in the Holy of Holies. Listen to me. Listen to me. The atonement can only be made in the Holy of Holies. And what corresponds with that in the temple of the Holy Spirit is your innermost being, your spirit man. Some people call it your heart. Listen, if that sacrifice has not, that blood has not been sprinkled on the innermost part, then there is no atonement. Jesus has already done that. He's done that for you. If you will receive Him, you can have this atonement. So wonderful is this atonement that He's made. But once again, let me say to you, God has always had a temple. He has a temple now. And He will, throughout eternity, have a temple. Now, the one in heaven is the real thing. The one on the earth is a type or a shadow. But listen, the temple of the Holy Ghost is the best yet. 
but there's better to come. Can you say amen? amen. The temple of the Holy Ghost, how, how, does, this, how does this fit in with, with Christianity, Brother Gerald? Listen, God has a temple. Somebody will immediately say to me, yes, but that was in the Old Testament or that was in the Bible. Not now. God's not that way anymore. He has never changed. And He never will change. He said, I am God and I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. He hasn't changed one degree on the sundial. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So don't think that God has changed today. He still requires a temple. Amen? Amen? And that's his idea. That's not my idea. So we need to know about the temple. We need to know about the temple today, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Are you ready to know about it? Say amen. I want to give you the five mysteries about the temple of the Holy Ghost that are cherishable. These are things that we ought to cherish. If we really understand who we are and where we came from, we will cherish these sort of things. Amen? Number one, number one, I want you to, I want you to see this mystery, the unprecedented invitation into the temple. The unprecedented invitation into the temple. These, these are the five things to consider. Not about gifts. That's the wrong slide. Wrong slide. The five mysteries about the temple of the Holy Ghost. Number one, the unprecedented invitation into the temple. Unprecedented invitation into the temple. What does that mean, Brother Gerald? He has invited you in. Why should he invite you in? You're not a Jew. You're not even a, a proselyte Gentile. But he's invited you in. I want you to look at verse 17 with me, if you will. Verse 17. And came Jesus, he came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were not. Who are the ones that are far off? That's the Gentiles. Who's the ones that are near? That's the Jews. Because he's starting out in verse 11 talking about the differences. And you see that the temple was the marking place. You, you, you didn't have an invitation to come in. You had an invitation to come and be a proselyte Jew but no invitation to come and participate as a Jew. And that was a real problem. Jesus come and he preached peace to you. Peace, meaning there's no more animosity against you. You, you can come to the temple. You can come to the temple of God. He came and preached peace to you. And Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22 states it very well. You don't have to look very far right here in Ephesians, but also in Colossians chapter 1. He says, are you listening to me? Say amen. amen. He says, and you who were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now, say now, now. yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. Why? To present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Oh, that's a wonderful thing. So that he might present me holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. Praise the Lord. This unprecedented invitation to the temple. And then the second mystery, and we ought to praise God for that, that invitation. Amen. Je listen, Jesus, Jesus was the first one who used the whosoever. I mean, he, he, he wasn't talking about just whatever Jew. Whosoever. He's the one that said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever 
believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He's the one that made the, the, the inclusion. He's the one that made the invitation. Praise God. It's the whosoever. And throughout the word of God, you'll find the whosoever there. Don't think because you weren't born a Jew that you can't be part of the temple. Jesus said whosoever. Then the second mystery that I want you to see is the divine intercession. For verse 18. Divine intercession for the temple. Verse 18. For through him. Say through him. Through him. Who's him? That's Jesus. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, what's he saying both for? Jew and Gentile. For, for through him, through Jesus, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. You see, the, the lost man, the, the, the non-Jew, the Gentile throughout the world had no access to God had so, no access to the Father. Only there at the temple could you have access to God. Jesus is saying, now both Jew and Gentile have access by the Spirit unto the Father. This divine intercession, He is making intercession for us daily. Amen? Amen. He is the one that brings this intercession. Now, that's... That's praiseworthy right there. But the third thing that I want you to see is the purchased inclusion into the temple. Inclusion. You know you've been included. Verse 19, look at it. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Woo! Woo! Wow, wow. Now, let's look at it a little bit further. Beginning in verse 11, look at your Bible. You've got to look at your Bible to find this. Verse 11, are you there? Say amen. amen. What does he say? In verse 11, he says, Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Now, how many, how many Jews, in the, according to the flesh, do we have here in the sanctuary? Any Jews, according to the flesh? You, okay, got one. Any the rest of you? All right, if you're not a Jew, according to the flesh, then you are a Gentile. All right? Paul said, I want you to remember that you're a Gentile. There's, at this time... When the temple was standing, there's two classifications of people, Jews and Gentiles. Then Jesus died on the cross and was risen again and ascended to the right hand. Now there's a third classification. It's church of God, church of the living God. All right? Now, he says, remember that you were Gentiles in the flesh who were called circumcision by that which is called uncircumcision in the flesh made by hands. Verse 12. Now, look at verse 12. You've got to see this. I'm amazed how few have their Bible. Verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. If you were a Gentile, you had no hope. You weren't part of the, the commonwealth of Israel. You were without God. The only way that you could even have any hope at all was to become a proselyte Jew and come to the temple and you'd have some hope. You were still a distant kin, in other words. You, you, you were still considered goy. And I, let me tell you what goy means. Goy is translated Gentile in the New Testament. But you know what goy means in, in, the, in the Greek? It means dog. You were looked on as a dog by the Jews. And at that time, you had no hope. You were without God. You weren't part of the commonwealth of Israel. You were alien. And look what he says. Verse 12. Excuse me, verse 13. But now, 
Say, but now. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometime were far off are made nigh, near by the blood of Christ. You were distant, you weren't apart, but now by the blood of Christ, you can be near to God. Verse 14, for he is our peace who hath made both one. That both again is Jew and Gentile. Having broken down the middle wall of petition, there was a wall built there in the courtyard. The Gentiles could not go across. God's broke that down, he says. That's the picture that he's painting for us here. Verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself twain, that's two, one new man. So making peace. Hallelujah. Verse 16. And that he might reconcile both, Jew and Gentile, unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. It was the cross of Jesus Christ that slew the enmity between you and God because you were a Gentile. And he came and he made peace and he made one new man by the cross of Jesus Christ. Everybody got that? Say amen. amen. Number three is the purchased inclusion into the temple. Listen, he, he purchased my inclusion into the temple. What, what does it say there in verse 19? It says, now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Praise the Lord. And the next thing I want you to see, the next mystery that we can cherish, we can be so thankful for, is the intricate interconnection of the temple. <coughs> now what does that mean? Every part's connected. Verse 20 and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Let me stop right here and say, the foundation's right. The foundation is right. The cornerstone is right. Now comes the building. You're built. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. He's talking about building a new temple. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Look at verse 21. In whom? In, in, who's he talking about? In Jesus. All the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. It's growing. The temple is still growing. Every time that there is someone that, that, that comes into the, to the family of God, every time there's someone who is born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, this temple is growing. But I want you to notice the wording of it here. It says, fitly framed together. That means that every piece must fit. I want you to know, when I built my house, I made sure that the foundation was perfect. It had to be not just almost level. It had to be perfectly level. And then I came up with it out of the ground and, you know, started building. And I found out, I bought some, I bought some brick that were very good price, and I found out why they was a good price. <laughs> they set the pallet down, and, and half of them busted. I said, I don't want these. Take them back. I ain't paying for that. But then I got on up to, to the framing part. It says fitly framed together, all right? I got up there, and, and, and I'm always trying to save some money because I didn't have much. And I got a deal on some tube folks. And these were, these were cut by a, an individual that had a portable sawmill. And that's all wonderful. And they were so much less than the the two befores you could buy anywhere else. They looked good. They looked strong. They were, I thought, perfectly cut. And I started building with this. 
and nothing fit. I kept going. I said, there's something wrong. There's something wrong with the way I'm doing this. And then I started to measure, and those two befores were an eighth of an inch too wide and an eighth of an inch too deep. An eighth of an inch multiplied by 100, it was way out of kilter. Y'all know what kilter is? It was way out of line. I said, I got to stop using these things. Now, with that in mind, listen, the whole building is fitly framed together. You fit, if you're part of the body of Christ, you fit into that temple of the Holy Spirit. And listen, I'm not going to carry you back over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that we looked at last week about the gifts. But you are part of the body of Christ. Your part, you are just as important as the rest of the parts. Now, how many of you know if the foundation had not been stable, the house would be on the ground by now? How many of you know that if, if, if it, everything didn't fit together, it would not be sturdy and strong? How many of you know that? Now, let me tell you something. You have been put in the body of Christ. You've been put into this temple of the Holy Spirit and for a purpose, and you fit. We all fit, fitly framed together. And what does he say? In whom, that's Jesus, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm part. I am needed. How many even know if I'd, if I'd have left out a supporting beam, that house would not have lasted. That was an important thing. But listen, that, that little trim piece was just as important. Amen. You're important in the temple of the Holy Spirit. You fitly frame together. And Ephesians chapter 4 says that the body is nourished, the body of Christ nourished by every joint supply. That that every joint supplies. So this, this idea of interconnection is all through the Bible. I need you and you need me. And the, the temple of the Holy Spirit needs you to be fitly framed together, to grow into this temple of the Lord. Now, the last thing that I want you to see, and this is very important. Number five, the unconditional integration into the temple. The unconditional integration into the temple. Look at verse 22. In whom, who? Jesus. In whom you are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Now we said that, that, that heaven, the, the temple in heaven, that's God's permanent dwelling place. But it says here that He's to have a dwelling place in the temple that is being formed by every believer. Now, now how is that so? This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He has come and he is not going to leave. Thank you, Brother John. He's not going to leave. He's come. He's with us. And he's not going to leave. Jesus said, I will send the comforter to you. He is with you, but he shall be in you. And he shall abide with you, say it, forever. Forever. I've said this during this series and I will say it again. God the Father is on his throne in heaven, ruling the universe. He's never left. Never. Not one time has the Father left his throne. Jesus Christ left his throne, came to earth, lived and died for me, was buried, rose again, and ascended into heaven, and he's seated there at the right hand of the majesty on high. And he ever lives to make intercession for me. He's there. 
He's coming back again, but he hadn't been back in 2,000 years. But when Jesus left, he said, I'm going to send the Spirit to you. He said, matter of fact, it's, it's better for you that I go away. Because if I don't go away, then I won't send him to you. And he sent the Holy Spirit. He's with us today. And that habitation. Now, how many of you know that habitation doesn't mean a one-night stand? It doesn't mean he'll be here for a week. It means a dwelling place. A permanent dwelling place. And it says there in verse 22, in whom, Jesus, we are also builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. And this is unconditional. He's come. Now, He's not going to leave you. Look up here. Anybody still with me? Wave your hand at me. He's not going to leave you. But you know you can grieve Him. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. You can quench the Holy Spirit. But you can't run Him off. Thank God. The Apostle Paul said, Don't you know? Know ye not, he says in the King James, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God? And you are not your own. In other words, you don't belong to you. You belong to the Holy Spirit. Amen. But I want to remind you quickly, in that same context, the Apostle Paul said, If any man defile the temple of God, that man will God destroy well, what does that mean, Brother Jerry? I think there's a lot of people having problems today. They shouldn't be dying. I, th I think there's a lot of people having serious illnesses today. They shouldn't be having. Why? Why are they having them, Brother Jerry? Does God not care about them? Yes, God cares about them. But let me tell you something. I, I believe that many folks have defiled the temple of God today you know it amazes me a doctor told me one time he said you know brother Gerald people are digging their own graves with a spoon overeating he said if, if they're not overeating they're, they're, they're burning up all their money on the end of a cigarette now this is what a doctor told me And he said, if they're not doing that, he said, they're putting things into their body that's defiling the temple of God. And he, the doctor told me this. Drug addiction. Do you know what a problem drug addiction is today? How many people are dying every day from drugs? And listen, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which you have of God and you're not your own? Amen. Amen. Well, what, what, do we do? what do we do with this message, Brother Gerald? I don't know what you do with it. I, I just did what the Lord told me to do. And I preached about the temple of the Holy Spirit. But listen to me. Listen to me. We are, we are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. When I started, I said we're not, we're not in the temple today. This building is not the temple, but we're in the temple. We're in the temple of the Holy Spirit today. Each one of you that's born again, you are part of the temple of the Holy Spirit. And God has made us a dwelling place. Now, how's, how's your part of the temple? Is it fitly framed together with others? Let me say to you, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, you're not part of that temple, but you can be if you'll trust the Lord Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.
confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord or your boss and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead and you will be saved. I want to quickly say to you, I didn't mean to say this, but I want to say this to you right now, every one of you looking at me. That word saved in the Greek does not mean that you made it to heaven. That's the word sozo. It means healing. It means deliverance. It means soundness of mind. It means joy. It means happiness. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall have sozo. You will be sozo. You'll be saved. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Life in the Spirit is good. Life in the temple is wonderful. It's the habitation of God through the Spirit. If you're not saved today, you can be. Come to Him. If you are saved, and, and, and you, you, you understand you're not fitly framing together with others. Listen, you can change that today. When Solomon dedicated the temple and prayed to God and said, God, if at any time someone comes and prays in this place, and they confess their sin. And they turn back to you. He said, hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal them. God answers Solomon's prayer and he says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Today, you can have that. God said he'd do that. <clears throat> Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would be glorified today in this invitation. Lord, somebody that needs to come would come. Father, somebody that's not right with you, would get right with you. Someone, Lord God, that's, that's even in the temple of, of, of God today, Lord, that they would pray, humble themselves, and seek your face, and turn from their wicked ways. And you promised you would hear. God, we love you, we praise you, and thank you for all that you've done all you're doing. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to sing.